So, uh, I'm Leonardo. I am both a researcher in the Net Commons project and I'm also part of the Linux.org community network in Italy. So what I will tell you about is more taking Linux as an example of what can be done and what is done normally in community networks for education and innovation, which is actually part of uh, an embedded part of communities and community networks from the real beginning. Linux again started in the early 2000. Uh, it is a very different network compared, for instance, with uh, Freifunk. It's a smaller uh, network with hundreds of nodes and not tens of thousands. And there are uh, small islands divided, split in Italy, not connected one with the other. But it's uh, like a very, I say, like geek-friendly network. It's a place where hackers and uh, those that like to experiment with technology, they have uh, room for experimenting in an open way. And I will use so Linux as an example of what a lot of community networks do uh, in order to promote their values and, their, and improve the technology that they use in an open way. So, uh, three phases of digital divide. This is a typical <coughs> description of the digital divide. Access, affordability, and relevance. Relevance is the point in which, I mean, not everybody perceives still internet as something interesting for themselves. And this concept can be expanded in the future. Like, we are going in a direction in which uh, internet will be, internet users will be split between the eyeballs, the, the one that actually passively use the internet, and the one that develop, they know how it works, they know the internal, so they dominate the instrument a bit more. So relevance, it's really important to understand the way that people use and the way that people will use uh, the network. And community network work a lot on relevance, mostly in three ways, in my experience. So they disseminate the internet, so they do education and advocacy on what the internet is for. They develop the internet, because they actually do enlarge the internet. What, uh, Freifunk does is actually enlarging the internet at the edges, at the fringes. And then they actually interact with the internet. They turn internet users into internet citizens, people that actually want to have a voice on the way that internet works. In a way, I will start with the, 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 the work that, in, that community networks do with education, dissemination, and courses. And uh, what I want to focus on is that uh, community networks, they are a bottom-up effort, which means that they can reach people that are really hard to reach in any other way. Here I have just a few leaflets of education material courses that we have been organizing in Linux. It's in Italian, so I don't want you to read through the, the thing, but what it is interesting are the logos of the associations that are not Linux, but that actually are part of this educational effort. For instance, this is a piece of Archie, which is like the largest NGO in Italy, and they know nothing about technology. But when we in Florence started to talk with them and trying to let them understand the values that are behind the community network, they were extremely interested. And so we started doing courses, and we started to let our concepts, technological and societal values, percolate through society in ways that they would be actually really hard to, to find with any other instrument. And the, thing, the same thing uh, for Fuselab, it's another place in Rome. This is a, another place in the south of Italy, in uh, Cosenza, where they are doing also these kind of activities. So this is one thing that the <coughs> community do. The other thing is like actually they improve and develop the internet. The internet is nothing that is fixed. It's always under development. And community network, they help shaping the internet in some way. And there are countless efforts, for instance, in open source projects and innovation that exists at the layer of community networks. For instance, uh, all the routing protocols that I will not go through, but that now power a lot of networks, they were if not designed, at least improved. If not improved, at least implemented and tested in community networks. And now these names here, they power commercial ISPs and a lot of other initiatives. This um, year, for instance, Freifunk and, and OpenWiz, which I will talk about uh, in a little, uh, they uh, were actually recognized by Google as a relevant organization to be financed by the Google Summer of Code. So the development that we do in community network doesn't stay into the community, but it just uh, springs and it goes outside of our contest. 
more tangible results. Uh, for instance, there is a European meeting which is called the Battle of the Mesh, because we meet there to understand who has the best mesh. Um, <laughs> Now, we, we, we were thinking about changing the name because it's a bit aggressive. But <laughs> anyway, from that experience, uh, another project STEM that, it, that is called the Libre Router. So from all the people that are in the Battle of the Mesh, not only in the Battle of the Mesh, uh, an NGO that works in Latin America is starting to manufacture their own open, free hardware router, which gonna be, is going to be a low-cost router, and they are actually optimizing it for unconnected regions, specifically in uh, developing countries. And they're actually doing it for real. Uh, the Confine research project is another outstanding example because uh, Leandro is here and he was the PI of the project. It's, uh, the, the situation got completely flipped over. Like community networks, they gave their network infrastructure to experimenters to experiment on them. So it was not uh, users of technology, but it was providers of infrastructure to make innovation on uh, various ways of uh, various fields in uh, communication. And then there is the Broadband Innovation Award. If what I say is not enough, uh, a couple of community networks were, were received, uh, received the award in 2015, 2016 for their effort in uh, innovating in the way that broadband or narrowband, if you want, is uh, developed and deployed. And then I have this story. Uh, it's a story from the Ninos community, and I was told that if you tell a story at a presentation of a person with his face and name, it's much better than numbers. So there is this person, it's called Federico. He, uh, you have to know that uh, Mesh Network community, they like to have maps, like the one that uh, uh, we saw before, because we, we like to, to see the network. So he started to develop the front end for our map in 2011, then again in 2013 he started over, then he was hired by an Italian public administration which actually develops this product. That is a tool that they use to manage public Wi-Fi. So they have tens of networks that they use, that uses this uh, project open source to manage the network. So from this experience, he merged the two things and he came to this project. This is the first version of the map, the old stuff. This is the second version of the map with new features. And this is OpenWISP, the second version of OpenWISP, which is a completely different thing because it's a network management system. It's open source, so from here you manage the nodes, configure them, monitor them, and, and you do a lot of fancy stuff. This is open source, and it's actually coming out of the experience of community networks. And we are in NetCommons, now I remove my hat of Linux and put my hat of NetCommons. We are actually mm -hmm. going back to this project to help them describe the network in a more sane way, for instance, from this, which is the visualization they have now, to something that allows them to visualize the nodes that are more important and they have to, to be taken care of. And so again, uh, community produce software, software produces innovation, researchers go back to innovation and tries to help. This is the story like up to yesterday. Federico was yesterday again in Googleplex with uh, Freyfunk, and they were actually setting up a workshop on community networks. And it will become uh, the standard way to manage a public access network for what, of course, the network that are managed by this association specifically. And, and it seems that also a startup is going to uh, come up from this experiment. So third thing. Uh, from internet users to internet citizens. We will talk about more uh, about this more in the next session, but the point is that there is a lot of interest now on the societal aspects of internet, but internet is generally imagined as application services. Facebook, Google, privacy. But there is little interest at to what is under the hood. As a communication network, we perceive internet as something that just works. If it's there, it just works. And we actually do not understand how much the physical component of it shapes the behavior of the applications. We do not generally put the right importance in how much telcos, CDNs, and all this stuff shape the way we use the application. And this is something that community network actually unveil because they, they tell us how you can actually manage your own network with the principles that you want. Fair, equal, democratic network. And they do this because they teach you how to build your own network. And once you are a person that knows at least partially how to do this, you're a person that can demand 
that can interact with the internet in a different way. Because you know that the internet is not just there, monolithic. It's there as it was designed by some people. But you can challenge this design. And so here are like just a few uh, events that were, um, this, uh, were organized by other communities. This was in, in Trento. From the very small to the global, like this is remote village in Trentino mountain region in Trentino, where we went to describe what the community network is, where they wanted to start. This was in Barcelona at the regional level with uh, uh, the government. This from the IGF, so at the global level, in which there is now a large interest in uh, uh, community networking. And this is, again, something that we will, I think we will speak about a lot uh, here in Europe. So my conclusions are that uh, community network, they work on the layer that is the hardest to reach, that is communities. They do not do this top-down, but they try to do it bottom-up. They produce innovation, and this innovation feedbacks in many fields, research, and even to the market. And they are on the frontier in advocating something that is really hard to understand, like a sustainable way of using and designing the internet. And this is all I wanted to say.